Another week on the North Shore, and the Steelers are that much closer to regular season play. Players are returning to action off the COVID reserve list, and the team will be donning full pads very soon. We have all the latest on the black and gold from Heinz Field right now on Steelers Training Camp 2020. It's Steelers Training Camp 2020, presented by FedEx. Welcome inside the KDKA TV studios for another edition of Steelers Training Camp 2020. I'm Bob Pompiani. Thanks for joining us. We have plenty to cover in tonight's show, including a look at James Conner and Devin Bush. We are talking with former NFL referee and CBS star Gene Sterator about the upcoming season. And we'll also see another portion of the Steelers new online series, which is called The Standard. But first, we welcome in former Steelers signal caller and my colleague here in the booth, Charlie Batch. Charlie, how excited are you to finally see some ramping up to the point we're going to have padded contact? That's what I want to see. Everybody looks good and good in shorts, but when you put the pads on, boy, does it separate the boys from the men. Well, the Steelers were hard at work this week on the North Shore as we are just days away from the team putting on those pads for the very first time, and it's been a long time. That's scheduled to take place Monday over at Heinz Field. One unit that is returning a lot of veteran starters is the offensive line anchored by center Marquise Pouncey and guard David DeCastro. Last year was not the greatest showing for this group, and that is something DeCastro and company are looking forward to changing heading into a new season. I don't know, man. Last year sucked. I kind of already forgot about it. It was not fun to play, as you know, as an offense. It was, uh, it was, it was, it was pretty terrible. Um, just, just, yeah, you kind of, you know, lose confidence and it just kind of snowballs and you just find ways to lose games. Can't win when your defense is getting five turnovers. Yeah, it was a, it's pretty, pretty, pretty tough year. Um, you know, it falls on everybody. You know, that's why it's a team sport. You know, you can't, you can't lose that confidence. And you gotta. Got to be better, but yeah, hopefully we can uh, get a better attitude this year and hopefully we can stay healthy. All right, Charlie, so we heard David DeCastro use the word sucked, and Mike Tomlin didn't disagree. And injuries obviously have played a role in that, but do you think this offensive line can improve upon last year when it comes to specifically opening up holes in the run game? I think they can, and, I, and when I'm listening to David DeCastro, I mean, it, he's frustrated. He's nine years in the league. He wants to get to the big game and hasn't been there. So when you look at what happened last year and now you look at what's going to happen this year, we saw a preview of the potential starting offensive line against the Rams last season. Remember, B.J. Finney, he missed that game. Matt Fowler moved from right tackle to left guard, and Chooks Okafor, he was the starting right tackle in that football game. They performed very well in that game. So if that's the offensive unit that's going to uh, be available for this upcoming season, I'm feeling pretty good about it. Yeah, Charlie, you know, DeCastro is part of a position group that is going to be key for the Steelers' success this year. So I ask you, how much does Ben Roethlisberger's return help the offensive line when it comes to making calls and having the passing threat back in the game? When, when, when you look at what Ben does at the line of scrimmage, a lot of that is communication with Marquise Pouncey, and those guys have done it for a very long time. So that, from a comfort level, everybody now has to respect it, at least from the defensive side, because now not only the threat of the passing game, but when you start now move, removing people from the box, that's going to open up those running lanes and allow for this offense to get going a lot more than it did last year. We have more from Charlie Batch coming up later in the program. For more on the Steeler run game right now, though, we send it over to my colleague Rich Walsh, who has a look at what James Conner has been up to in this offseason. With all the talk about a healthy Ben Roethlisberger returning to the Steelers offense, the importance of the running game sometimes gets overlooked. But in order to keep defenses guessing, they will need to show at least a threat to run. And that threat will once again lie on the shoulders of James Conner. You know when he gets cranking like he is right now, he's tough to stop. Conner gets the call up over the pile, and he does get in for the Steelers' touchdown. In just his second year in the NFL, James Conner opened eyes around the league with his tough running and pass-catching ability, but that was two years ago. Last year, Conner missed significant time due to injuries, and even when he did play, he wasn't nearly as effective. So why were the two seasons so different? When asked, Connor chose to focus on the future and not the past. Uh, you just be a professional, and you just realize, you know, you can't get you can't get time back. You can't, you know, get plays back. And you always gotta have that that next play and uh, next opportunity mindset. And you know, we can't do anything about last year, so we're just looking forward to to, to this year. Connor had a busy off season with both football and life. He bought his dad a truck, his mom a new house, but as you can see. 
he still found time to hit the gym and came into camp in tip-top shape. No, I just worked hard. You know, that's all, that's all there is to it. You just have a work ethic. Uh, every year you attack it, give it all you got in the offseason, prepare for the season. It's a game of football. Injuries going to happen, so I don't really pay no attention to what anybody says, honestly. Um, the ones who make all the important decisions, they believe in me, I believe in myself. So I'll leave it at that. That belief in himself goes beyond the football field. Many thought that because of his previous battle with cancer that Connor would be one of the many players to opt out of playing this year, but not the kid from Erie. I'm going on four years now removed from cancer, so I didn't have to talk to my family, and that uh, was never a concern for me. Um, you know, I've been healthy for years now, so you know, it was, was, easy, it was an easy decision for me. Not much thought went into it. Uh, I to play football and I'm healthy. My immune system is, is back healthy, so I'm not worried. Now in his fourth year in the league, Connor sees himself taking on a new role in addition to being the starting tailback. Yeah, it's definitely in a leadership role. It's my job to, you know, get that running back group going. So I just got to set the tone every day when I step out there for practice. And I teach these young guys. It's been awesome. You know, we're all just learning from each other. It's, it's a group effort going forward. It's been fun so far. In addition to leading the running back group in practices and meetings, the Steelers hope that Connor can get back towards leading the league on the stat sheet like he did in 2018. Take a look at the drop-off between his second and third seasons. Now, he did miss six games last year, but he also missed three games in 2018, so he only played in three more games between the two seasons. Regaining his 2018 form would go a long way to helping the Steelers get back to the playoffs. Now to go more in depth about Connor, I'm joined by the Post Gazette's Jerry Dulac. Jerry, what kind of season do you expect from James Connor this year? And can a player like him do anything in the offseason to try to stay healthy, stay away from injury once the games begin? Well, Rich, I'll answer the second part of that first. You know, we've seen uh, from uh, all the uh, uh, social media posts by James Connor how hard, in fact, he has worked this offseason. You know, he said it's as hard as he, he typically does, but you can see his body is sculpted a little bit differently. We saw that from uh, Le'Veon Bell uh, after his first or second year. What's going to be significant about this year, he's in a contract year. He needs to show, one, he can stay healthy, and two, he can be productive because it's going to be difficult then for the Steelers to give him a con uh, contract commensurate with being a number one running back. He'll definitely get paid if he has stats like he did in 2018. So Connor obviously returns as a starter with Benny Snell as his primary backup. Snell showed some flashes last year. Do you think the Steelers have plans to increase his workload, even if Connor does stay healthy? Yeah, I think Benny Snell is a competent number two back, uh, Rich. And But uh, until Mike Tomlin shows me that he wants to deviate from his I'll run him till the wheels fall off, I just don't expect that to be any type of even modest rotation. James Conner is going to get the majority of the work unless he gets injured. That's the way Mike Tomlin always has operated. That's the way he'll continue again this year. All right, thanks, Jerry. We'll start to get a good look at the running game beginning next week when the team starts full practices on Monday. All right, Rich, Jerry, thank you very much. Up next, we have another look inside of Heinz Field with the latest episode of The Standard. Keep it locked on Steelers Training Camp 2020. Welcome back to Steelers Training Camp 2020, presented by FedEx. All right, welcome back to the program here. Ladies and gentlemen, thanks for joining us. This year, the Steelers started a new online series. It's called The Standard, where they take you inside the process of training camp. We're lucky enough to get a look at the latest episode. It's called Light on Their Feet. Good morning. Now I'm excited about getting started with you guys in this process, and I refer to it uh, as a process because it is that. In a lot of ways, man, um, it is our off-season condensed into a very small area. It is competitively fair, meaning all 32 teams are doing similar things. So we're going to adhere to the procedure, to the letter, to minimize the impact of COVID. We're going to respect that, man. I'm going to be light on my feet. I'm going to work my tail off to create an environment that's the safest it can be. Man, I got a love for football that's going to be displayed in how I respect this COVID protocol. I got a respect for this group and the design to keep you and your family safe that's going to be revealed in how I conduct myself relative to this protocol. Football is football, but keeping everyone in the Steelers organization safe during training camp at Heinz Field is the top priority. 
It isn't just the COVID-19 protocols. It involves some of the basics that need to be done before anyone can hit the practice field. And it all starts with a trip to see the equipment staff. Wow. It's just terrifying here. Yeah, you want to see my cool mask? What's that say? Steelers. Yeah, it says Steelers. Eric Ebron and the team's other new faces are getting used to wearing the black and gold. And some more familiar faces are showing up to make some minor equipment adjustments for 2020. Black like glove. Be back, man. It's time to grind, it's time to work. Yeah? Mm hmm. That's really good. Let's get to it. Thank you, Missy, and Steelers.com. You can check out full episodes of The Standard on Steelers.com and the team's YouTube and Facebook pages. Plenty of great content from behind the scenes in each of those programs. We are now happy to be joined by Gene Steratore, longtime NFL referee and, of course, does some excellent work on CBS Sports. Gene, thanks for joining us. I want to, first of all, get your take on just where the officials are moving into this season because there's been a lot of talk about it. Are they comfortable? Are they willing to return? You know, I think, well, I, I know f finalizing their negotiation uh, moving up, then that finished this weekend, Bob. Um, collectively, I, I think the union was satisfied with the agreement that they had settled with the NFL, and, uh, and they'll get ready to prepare as much as any of us can right now in the, in the face of this pandemic. All right, Gene, I want to switch real quick to talk about some of the rule changes. We see the expansion of automatic reviews on scoring plays that were negated by penalties. So tell us how much of an impact that will have on the game. Uh, maybe a half dozen plays a year. These are plays where a penalty negated is touchdown. Now you go back and look at the play, and if it's a reviewable foul, uh, they can remove that penalty and create a score out of that. Uh, I think that, that one's a, you know, that'll show up very infrequently, I would assume. All right, let's talk about, you mentioned pass interference, the P.I. call. It uh, apparently is going to be scrapped. Was it an abject failure and an overreaction by the NFL? It was them taking technology and the enhancement of it, as we spoke about in Latrobe last year, and putting the subjectivity of a foul. I think they, they, they did what they felt they needed to experiment with because of the situation the previous end of the season. And I think that... Uh, uh, maybe more rational heads prevailed as they watched this unfold and, and they put it to bed, hopefully, hopefully forever. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> I, I think you guys, when you were there and all these guys do a wonderful job, and I think it's really difficult with the uh, microscopic uh, replay system in place that all of these calls, they look so different. And you and I talked about that. That's, that. That makes it almost impossible to make a call, doesn't it? It does, Bob, and, and and now even with DPI and the uh, pass interference is out. You know, we go into when is a catch finished, and now the run begins right after the catch is finished. That's another element that we all need to pay close attention to when we see that real quick catch hit, ball pops out, we rule incomplete or they rule fumble. You always need to be cognizant of hopefully officiating the play and replay, even these catch no catches almost at the same speed that the officials ruled on it in real time on the field. And I think that'll get us to a more consistent place where we don't get tricked by the slow motion replay too much. Gene Steratore, always a mountain of information. I do appreciate your time and all the best to you in 2020. Great to see you, Bob. You as well. Hope we talk again soon. We certainly will. And right now we're going to turn over to Rich Walsh, who's joined by Jerry Dulac, who has more on NFL rule changes. All right, thanks, Bob. Jerry, we just heard from Gene Steratore about the pass interference review process being scrapped this season. Is this good or bad moving forward? Well, Rich, I can tell you this. The owners couldn't wait to get at that rule and, and squash it after last year. You know, they only voted for it because of the whining and complaining by Sean Payton. And I get it because it cost his team a trip to the Super Bowl. But that was a horrible rule, so I'm not surprised at all that they did it, and I think it's a wonderful thing because I thought that rule was terrible. So like many other things in the world today, the scheduling of NFL officials will change due to COVID restrictions, and some officials may end up working with the same teams numerous times this season. Do you see it in any way as that a problem? 
Rich, I could see it both being a plus and a problem. I think the plus is, is that the same officials kind of get a feel for how your team plays. And conversely, the team and the players get a feel for how the game's going to be officiated. I think the negative is if you get a, an official or a crew uh, that maybe doesn't like a couple of your players, maybe they don't like your coach, maybe somebody gets under their skin that they don't like, and then they have an eye out for them, you know? Um, and so, you know, like James Harrison claimed that they did a number of years ago, that could be the downside. But I actually think it would all in all, it would be a positive. All right. Thanks, Jerry. Certainly a crazy time for all of us, including NFL referees. All right, guys, thanks very much. Coming up next, former Steeler Merrill Hodge breaks down linebacker Devin Bush and his first season with this team. You are watching Steelers Training Camp 2020. Welcome back to Steelers Training Camp 2020, presented by FedEx. Welcome back, everyone. One major story from last season was the emergence of rookie linebacker Devin Bush, who was a big factor in the Steelers' defensive success. Merrill Hodge is here now to break down what made Bush so successful in his rookie season. Hi everyone, I'm Merrill Hodge. I'm sitting in my favorite chair doing my favorite thing, watching tape. Well, we're gonna focus on Devin Bush. We're gonna watch how he performed his rookie year. He did a lot of awesome things. And there were some things where he had a lot of hesitation, which is not to be unexpected. So let's look at Seattle right here. You know, the first thing is the motion and then they, they bunch. You know, there's three people over here. They've just motioned. And if you're thinking what Devin Bush is, doing he's trying to identify where his responsibility is now ultimately his responsibility ends up being this tight end and keep in mind we're slowing this down so that we can absorb it and explain it but he's got to, he's really got to look at all three of these players and identify who is going to be his guy that releases inside he's got the first wide receiver to the inside. Well, the wide receiver's already motioned across. They've moved back. They've done this in efficient fashion. And so his responsibility is to locate that guy. You can see the tight end. I mean, he's already exploding. He's already at the same level of Devin. Now, once that happens, really advantage offense, they've got you in a bad situation from a defensive perspective. And what they end up doing is making the perfect throw, the tight end one right off the bat from the snap and because he hesitated a little bit you know you give up a touchdown now let's take a look at some of the things he did really well and he's going to build on and that makes him a very unique a unique player so you just see where he is here let's kind of get into 55's jersey if you will and play like an inside linebacker things that he's looking at if we walk through it when we snap the ball now this could look like run right away you know, as you got to realize what he's got to be looking at and filtering through. And he gets through that process. That's why he hesitates for a second, but now he explodes through it. So this to me is just awesome football. This I wanted to show you because it really shows his unique range. And not every linebacker in football has this. This is what will make him ultimately stand out and make massive plays. Now this run, this run is going to be off to the right and the Patriots actually run it really well and they block it well but this potentially is a touchdown keep in mind and I just want you to watch Devin who really comes from all the way over here and tracks this down I just want you to watch how fast he does it you know the speed that he does it with you know it doesn't get cut there he avoids that and then another great job of tackling and I, I keep saying that it stands out you got to be a good tackler. Too many people try to hit in this league, and this is a tackling league if you want to be great. But just look at that and his ability to finish. You know, you translate all the things that he did well. You look at the things that he struggled with. Those things are going to get better. Great stuff from Errol Hodge. And for more on Devin Bush, let's check in with Charlie Batch here. And Charlie, uh, what do you see out of Devin Bush, and how do you see him progressing in year number two for him? Yeah, for me, I'm looking at that confidence level is sky high. This is a player who had 109 tackles last year, two interceptions, one sack. So you know he's capable of flying around the field. The loss of Mark Barron from this roster, I fully expect Devin Bush to come out and have even a more 
better season than he had last year. All right, and now Rich Walsh is standing by with Jerry Dulac of the Post Gazette and more on Bush and his rookie campaign. Jerry, what did you think of Devin Bush's rookie season? He did show some flashes, right? Oh, I don't think there's any question, Rich. I can tell you this. The coaches uh, love Devin Bush. I will tell you the problems that they had with him last year had to do with two things, communication and understanding his assignments. Look, he was a, he's a rookie, the first-year guy. They expect that to change. But when you look at his numbers, you know, led the team with 109 tackles, uh, four fumble recoveries, one for a touchdown, two interceptions. Um, this guy is a, is a terrific player. All right, no question about that. But some people are making the comparison between his rookie year and Troy Palomalo's disastrous first season. Do you think Bush can improve much like Troy did? Well, nobody's going to put him in Troy's class because that would be unfair. And Troy's rookie year could not even begin to compare to Devin Bush's rookie year. And like I said, his numbers, uh, I, I wouldn't call Devin Bush's, and you didn't, I realize, but I wouldn't even, uh, uh, you know, compare you know, the season in, t in terms of inferring that maybe it was disastrous. He did a pretty good job. And so um, uh, we're going to see how he progresses. But to think that he's going to progress like Troy Palomalu might be a, l a little unfair. But I do think Devin Bush is going to be a very, very good player. Jerry, once again, great stuff. I appreciate the time. See you again next week. All right, Rich. All right, gentlemen, thank you. When we return, we look ahead to a major week as the Steelers strap on the pads for the very first time. You're watching Steelers training camp. 2020. Final thoughts, Charlie. What are you most looking forward to next week? I'm looking at the right tackle position. I want to see that battle between Zach Banner, Chooks Okafor. I want to see who separates themselves now that the pads are on. All right, that's going to do it for our program. Charlie, thank you very much. We do appreciate your time. Our thanks to Rich Walsh, Missy Matthews, Merrill Hodge, Charlie Batch. I'm Bob Pompiani. Remember, they're going to be live streaming practice from Heinz Field next week on Steelers.com. Check them out, and we'll see you next Saturday for another edition of Steelers Training Camp 2020.